أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الفاتح الختم وعلى آله كريم دار العظيم السلام عليكم in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful all praises are due to the almighty Allah the lord of the universe the most beneficent the most merciful the sovereign of the day of judgment you alone we worship and from you alone we implore help guide us to a straight path the path of those whom you have favored neither of those who have incurred your wrath no of those who have gone astray O oh Allah maintain your praise persistently of our chief and master Muhammad the key to that which is closed the seal to that which is past the upholder of the truth by means of truth the proper guide to your straight path upon his family according to his eminence and his great honor assalamu alaikum good evening everyone I am back on my series of lectures on the topic Ramadan series, a conversation on Quranic revelation. If you can remember, in the last session, we were discussing how Moses received the divine revelation. That is how the Torah was revealed to Prophet Moses. And we were in the course of, we were specifically at the point where Moses required requested from the Almighty Allah to see him, saying, as narrated by the Holy Quran, A'udhu Billahi Ibn Shaitan Rajeem, Falamma jaa Musa li mikatina, wa kallamahu rabbuhu, kaala rabbi arini anzir ilayk, kaala lan tarani. When Moses came for our appointment, for our covenant, when he arrived at the Mount of Sinai and his Lord spoke to him directly, Moses, out of ecstasy of the divine communication and the joy he derived from being communicated to by the Almighty Allah, he concluded that definitely citing the essence of the Almighty Allah would be much, much more joyful than the receiving communication from him. So he prayed, Al Rabbi Arini Anzri like, Oh my Lord, show me how to see you. The Almighty Allah said, Kala Lantarani. The Almighty Allah said, Kala Lantarani. Moses, you will never see me in that manner, that in the manner in which he requested. Sukala said, that means that indicates the possibility of citing the Almighty Allah uh, because Prophet Moses wouldn't be ignorant of the fact that seeing the Almighty Allah is impossible in this world. He wouldn't have prayed for it were it impossible. So uh, that also established the fact, according to Sukhalas, that our dear Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu cited his Lord, cited, he saw the Almighty Allah on the night of his ascent to the heaven, that is his historic journey, his historic night journey to Baitul Magdis and his subsequent ascent to the heaven. Anyway, and the Almighty Allah Providing an example for Moses to know the impossibility of him seeing the Almighty Allah, not the impossibility of sighting, uh, of seeing the Almighty Allah, but the impossibility of Moses seeing the Almighty Allah. He said, "Well, I can undo ila jabali, fa inistakarra makana hu fa sabatarani." To show you the infeasibility of you seeing the Almighty Allah that you have, you lack the strength and the power to endure the sight of the Almighty Allah. So, take a look, or rather look, set your gaze on the mount, on this mount, that is the mountain of Sinai. Uh, set your gaze on the mountain 
an fainis takarra makanahu if the mountain could stand the manifestation the divine manifestation then you too will be able to stand it fainis takarra makanahu if it uh, if it remains in its state without it being crushed then that means you will see the almighty allah falamma tajalla rabbuhu lil jabal jaalahu dakkan when the almighty allah made manifestation to the mountain the mountain was crushed to dust he that manifestation crushed the mountain to dust wa kharra musa sayikan am musus as a result fell down unconscious falamma afaka wani regain his consciousness qala subhanaka tubtu ilayka wa ana awwal almu'minin he said oh glorified be you my lord tubtu ilayka i repent to you wa ana awwal almu'minin for i am the first among the israelites to be to believe in this great sign that you showed me then as at the end of the day tablets were sent down to moses in on, on which the scripture of torah was inscribed the point i wanted to make here is that moses received the entirety of the revelation of torah instantly the torah was inscribed on the tablets and the tablets were sent down to him so you can see the difference here uh, the torah was not revealed over a period of time in the same way the holy quran was revealed rather it was inscribed on the tablets and the tablets were handed down to prophet moses the almighty allah said wa katabna lahu fil alwah min kulli shay'in mawizatan wa tafsilan li kulli shay'in fakuza bi quwwatin wa amur qawmaka ya kuzu bi ahsaniha sawrikum dar al fasidin the almighty allah said we inscribe the torah on the tablets we inscribe the torah for him that is for prophet moses on the tablets fil alwah min kulli shay'in mawizatan wa tafsilan li kulli shay'in explaining the nature of everything and in full details that is the the revelation uh the details provide explanation for everything that israelites wanted to know and moses was addressed by the almighty allah fakuza bi quwwatin take it with all sense of seriousness take it take the tablet hold them firmly firmly with all firmness bi quwwatin wa amur qawmaka ya kuzu bi ahsani and also enjoin your people to hold fast to the tenets of torah so urikum dar al fasi so uh this will tell you that uh you can see the difference so that means uh other scriptures were revealed uh at once that is the scriptures were revealed at once all at once so i like the holy quran that was revealed over a period of time so you can see the difference uh that is why we title the series as uh, a conversation on quranic revelation we made a comparative analysis between the revelation of the holy quran and the revelation of other scriptures that came before it in the case of the holy quran the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have reached the age of 40 here we can see moses 
did not receive the Torah until after the destruction of Pharaoh. In fact, years after the destruction of Pharaoh, then Moses was invited to receive the scripture of Torah. Throughout the period he struggled against the Pharaoh of Egypt, there was no scripture. Of course, he used to receive revelation from the Almighty Allah uh, with instructions on what to do, what not to do, or how to govern his people, how to lead them aright, how to show them, how to teach them devotions, devotional activities, and so on and so forth. But the scripture itself was not yet revealed. In the case of our ummah, the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu and another thing that we need to observe is that Moses was commanded by the Almighty Allah to fast for 40 days before the revelation of the Holy Quran. While in, uh, he had to fast for 40 days before he received the scripture of Torah, uh, I mean the Torah, not the Holy Quran. In our case, it was the revelation that started. In fact, the prophet started with what? With the revelation of verses from the Holy Quran. That is when our dear prophet started receiving the revelation in the cave of uh, Hira, as narrated by both Bukhari and Muslim in their respective collections on the authority of Umina Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. She said, أول ما بدي أبيه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من الوحي الرؤيا الصالحة في النوم فكان لا يرى الرؤيا إلا جر مثل فلك السفي ثم حبب إلى الخلاء أبتدين that the first signs of revelation that came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came in the form of good dreams whatever he dreamt of it will come to pass so that indicated to him that something Mag, uh, something magnanimous was about to happen to him. So he he started detesting uh, social interactions. He preferred going into circulation and he practically started going into circulation in the cave of Hira. And he used to stay there for quite a number of days, uh, taking along with him some food stuff. And when he exhaust, whenever he exhausted the food, then he will come back and take more to the cave. Up to the time when Angel Gabriel appeared to him, feeling the entire horizon. Then. Uh, the angel asked him, uh, caught hold of him, and asked him, commanded him, Ikra, read. And this is very important. The first revelation that was sent down to a dear prophet was a command, not prohibition. Nothing, not even worship, rather read. Despite the fact that the Holy Quran made it clear that the fundamental purpose of our creation was to worship the Almighty Allah. I have never created human beings and genes except for the purpose of worshiping me. I need, I stand in no need of them uh, uh, reaching me, nor do I stand in need of them to feed me. You can see the fundamental reason of our creation is to worship the Almighty Allah. But the first command the Prophet received from his Creator was read, ikra. Because no devotion will be considered valid if it is not in concordance with the teachings 
of the Almighty Allah through His Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And that can only be understood when one reads, when one learns how to worship. Then therefore, Ikra, 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 Bismillah, Khalak. Read in the name of uh, your Lord that created the kingdom of creation. Khalak. You are Lord that created. And here we can go on and analyze this verse. Why we can see the divine choice of words here. Ikra, read. In fact, it was a deliberate choice of command. Why did the Almighty Allah choose to command us? Why did the Almighty Allah choose to command us to read before anything else? So as to teach us that the only characteristic that differentiates us from animals is knowledge. Human beings are not in any way better than animals, if not for knowledge. Only knowledge distinguishes human beings from animals. So, therefore, read. And be ismirabika in the name of your Lord. <laughs> That knowledge without blessing will end up being useless. That is why blessing is required by reading in the name of our Lord. You are Lord. He didn't say Bi Ismillah. He said Bi Ismirabika because in the chapter Ar Rahman, he said, Ar Rahman, Allah al Quran, Khalaq al Insan, Allah Mahul Ban. It is Ar Rahman that teaches the Holy Quran. Oh, it is Ar Rahman that taught the Holy Quran. It is Ar Rahman that created human beings and taught him the explanation of everything. Ar-Rahman, Allah al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, Allah al-Bayan. So that is that. And that's why the ismi rabbika al-lazi khalaq. You are Lord that creates. Here, that means by the virtue of knowledge, human beings will be so innovative and explore the entire kingdom of creatures and exploit the space, the outer space. In fact, all spheres of creatures, all spheres of the universe will be explored and exploited by human beings in as much as they keep learning and reading. Only through reading you can explore and exploit the entire universe beyond your imagination. Today we can see the extent of the exploration, of human exploration of the world and human exploitation of the world. In fact, there is no any part of the universe that is not explored and exploited, none to human beings, except parts of the universe that are yet, that are not yet known to human beings. But whatever is known to human beings, they will explore it and exploit it by the virtue of knowledge. While other creatures are there waiting for anyone to come and explore and exploit them, in the case of human beings, they are the explorers and they are the exploiters. So you can see the virtue of knowledge. I'm going to stop here, inshallah, when I come back in the next session. I'm going to continue exactly where I stop. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih lima ugulik wal khatim lima sabak nasi al-haki bilhaq wal hadi ila sadiq al-mustaqim وعلى آل يقدم دار العظيم سبحان ربك وزدتم السلام سبحان ربك وزدتم السلام عليكم